So today's a fun one. Today we're talking about the best export settings for Premiere Pro. Unless this isn't your definition of a fun time, then this is gonna be quite a boring video. But I really hope you're as weird as I am and in your free time, you like watching videos about how to export videos. So first things first, you wanna make sure that your sequence was set up at the proper resolution and the proper aspect ratio. That means not using a PNG off of Google to get the cinematic black bars. If you want a widescreen ratio, set it up properly in your sequence settings. So for example, this video you're watching right now is in a two to one aspect ratio, but I film in 16 by nine. So when I set up my sequence, instead of setting up a normal 4K sequence, I set it up at 3840 by 1920. That gives me the two to one aspect ratio you're looking at right now. If I wanted to go a little bit more Hollywood and I wanted the black bars, I could do something like 3840 by 1600, let's say. That's typically what you see movies in. So just set it up properly in your sequence settings. You're gonna have a lot less problems when rendering out your videos and it's just gonna play properly across all platforms. So once you have your sequence properly set up, you can go about editing your video and once you're all done, you wanna go up to file, export, and then media or just control M on your keyboard. Now Adobe recently changed this screen completely, but it's really not too hard to navigate and I'll walk you through it really quickly right now. So first things first, you wanna name your file and then pick where you wanna save it. You can completely ignore the preset tab for now because we're gonna be using our own custom settings. Now for format, you're gonna pick H.264. That's the most popular format and it's gonna give you the least amount of compatibility issues across platforms and devices. Now once you have that selected, you wanna click on your video tab. And here, just hit match source. Now if you set up everything correctly from step number one, your frame size and your frame rate should match from your sequence settings. But it's always nice to just just double check. One other thing you should double check is that your field order is set to progressive and your aspect is set to square pixels. But that's usually the default, so you probably won't have to mess with it. Just double check. Now those were your basic render settings, but this next part is how you get the most out of Premiere. You wanna hit more and then check render at maximum depth and use maximum render quality. This is gonna ensure that your video is looking the best that it possibly can. Now to render as fast as possible, under performance you wanna make sure hardware encoding is selected. And if this is grayed out, it's for one of two reasons. You either have VBR2 pass selected or you just have a GPU that isn't compatible with Premiere Pro. I'll leave a full list of compatible GPUs down in the description below. The only other setting you have to worry about here is bitrate encoding and target bitrate. Under there, you have two options, VBR and CBR. VBR stands for variable bitrate, CBR stands for constant bitrate. VBR essentially is Premiere analyzing your frame and deciding which part of your frame needs more bit rates than the other. For example, this frame, Premiere might decide that the bookshelf back there doesn't need as much power, so it's not gonna send as much because it's pretty much stationary, not much is happening there, and it's gonna focus most of its energy in the center part of the frame where everything is moving, I'm talking and stuff like that. I personally don't like doing that because I kind of compare it to filming in auto. You're letting your camera decide what to do, what's the best settings. I would personally take the control myself and tell my camera, you know, what ISO, shutter speed and everything to use. Same thing goes for your export settings. I would rather tell Premiere that use a constant bit rate across the frame. Doesn't matter if stuff is stationary like that or it's moving like this. It's gonna result in slightly bigger file sizes, but honestly, storage is cheap these days and in my opinion, it's totally worth it. And VBR2 pass is pretty simple. It's just gonna analyze your footage twice to give you even smaller file sizes by doubling your render time. Not worth it in my opinion, just go with CBR. And if you have 4K footage, typically a constant bit rate of around 60 to 75 is great. And if you're doing 1080p footage, usually around 30 to 40 is more than enough. Now on to the audio settings. And here, all the default settings are great. Don't have to touch anything, everything's fantastic. Now, you're ready to render. But if you wanna save all of these settings as a preset so you don't have to go through this process every time, you just click on these three little dots by preset and you can just give it a name and now all of your settings are saved as a preset. Now every time you wanna export a video, just hit Control M on your keyboard, give your file a name, pick where you want to save it, choose your preset, and hit export. And that's it. All right, guys, that was it for me today. If this video helped you out, don't forget to leave it a like. Subscribe for more videos like this in the future, and I'll see you guys next time.